Prime Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob says Putrajaya is looking at further easing COVID-19 measures, particularly for the local tourism industry, once the country's vaccination process, including the administration of booster doses, is complete. Ultimately, the decision will depend on the Health Ministry's recommendations when the time comes. Addressing employees of the Prime Minister's Department today, Ismail Sabri noted that Malaysia remains closed to foreign tourists and the government is still giving wage subsidies to local tourism industry players. He highlighted the fact that some countries had relaxed their restrictions for visitors from other nations and that it is something for Malaysia to consider. He added the reopening of the international tourism industry would help revive the general economy. At the moment, he said the government remains cautious about taking in foreign tourists, citing the increasing number of COVID-19 infections abroad. Currently, Malaysia and Singapore have a joint vaccination travel lane initiative and the government is hoping to extend it to Indonesia and Thailand. CGS CIMB research downgraded the telco sector to underweight. Following an in-depth look at Digital National Berhads or DNB's commercial offer, According to the research house, based on the offer and timeline for site rollouts, mobile network operators may each have to pay substantial 5G wholesale fees. 303 million ringgit in FY23, 403 million ringgit in FY24, 432 million ringgit in FY25 and 432 million ringgit in FY26. For Maxis in particular, it projects the fees could further rise to 577 million ringgit to 1.5 billion ringgit per annum in FY27 to FY31, driven by traffic volume growth. It downgraded its rating for Maxis shares to reduce and revised its target price for the counter to 3 ringgit 80 sen. CGS CIMB added, the operators may not be able to generate much extra mobile revenue from 5G in the near to mid-term. This is due to a lack of unique killer use cases and still limited coverage in the first few years, while 5G device penetration will take time to rise. The research house still prefers the fixed segment due to better revenue growth prospects, more benign competition and less regulatory risk. Telecom Malaysia remains its top Malaysian telco pick with an unchanged target price of seven ringgit fifty cent. Senheng New Retail faltered on its debut on Bursa Malaysia's main market today. The counter opened at 90 sen apiece and rose as high as 1 ringgit 1 sen before closing at 85.5 sen for a market capitalization of 1.28 billion ringgit. That's a 20% discount from its IPO price of 1 ringgit 7 sen. It was the day's second most actively traded stock on the bourse, with 163.5 million shares exchanging hands. Senheng is the largest consumer electrical and electronics chain retailer in Malaysia, with a chain of 105 physical stores. Its executive chairman Lim Kim Heng said at a virtual press conference following the listing ceremony that Sen Heng's plan to grab a further 30% market share is not too difficult to achieve after the IPO, as it had seen double-digit growth before the COVID-19 pandemic. While the timing of its listing may not be optimal, he said its business fundamentals are on the right track and hopes investors will be cheered by its upcoming fourth quarter results, which will be announced next month. He added that the focus for the next two to three years will remain on growing revenue, net profit and the return on investment for its investors. Malaysia tumbled in Transparency International Malaysia's Corruption Perceptions Index rankings in 2021 for a second straight year, with a score of 48 points. This is the first time it booked a score below 50 since 2012. The country now ranks 62nd, down five rungs from 2020. Among the ASEAN countries, it placed third after Singapore, which had a score of 85, and Brunei with a score of 60. Notably, Singapore was the only Asian country to make it to the top 10, ranking fourth after Denmark, Finland and New Zealand. Meanwhile, among selected Islamic countries, Malaysia ranked sixth after the UAE, 
Qatar, Brunei, Oman and Saudi Arabia, Transparency International Malaysia President Dr Mohamed Mohan said among the factors behind Malaysia's declining score is the stall in institutional reforms. For instance, the failure of the last four governments to table the political financing bill. As a result, he said money politics is still rampant, both during elections and as a scheme for corruption. Mohammed also pointed to the acquittals or discharges not amounting to acquittal of high-profile personalities in several corruption cases with no clear clarification from the Attorney General's office and the suspension of Parliament during the movement control order, among others. National Feedlot Corp or NF Corp, the company embroiled in the so-called cows and condo scandal, its chairman Datuk Sri Dr Muhammad Saleh Ismail and nine others are in talks with the government to reach a settlement. Putrajaya filed a 250 million ringgit lawsuit against the parties in a bid to recoup monies loaned to NF Corp. The funds were meant to help set up and operate a national feedlot centre in Gemas Negeri Sembilan. But 118 million ringgit or nearly half of the monies were used instead to buy land and luxury properties, among others. The government is seeking from the accused 253.62 million ringgit, which includes accrued annual interest of 2% from May 1st, 2019. It is also seeking a personal declaration from Muhammad Saleh and his three children, two of whom are NF Corp directors, that they are personally liable for the 118 million ringgit and that they will repay the money to the government. The hearing of the case, which was originally scheduled to resume today, was adjourned after lawyers representing the government and the accused informed the court that both sides were in the midst of a settlement. In the event the talks are unsuccessful, High Court Judicial Commissioner Anand Ponudurai said he will not adjourn the trial any longer and that the case has to be completed by this year. <laughs> 